Hello everyone, welcome to the third and final part of our introduction chapter to the operations management. So there are two more concepts that we want to talk about. Then in the subsequent chapters, we will keep on exploring these layers in more details. So let's talk about the concept of value added. So in the beginning of this lecture, what we said, the whole idea is to have your operations more efficient and effective. And what is happening at each activity of the transformation process, we are converting uh, material or information to goods and services. So which means this value added during the transformation process at each step of the activity. So how do we describe value? Now, as I said earlier in the previous video, the value may mean different, different people. Some people regard high quality as a high value product the others may look into product based on the cost competitiveness so from operations management viewpoint we can describe value added as the difference between cost of inputs and the price of output so in order to explain this properly uh, i would like to add one more term here uh, we're going to come this across a lot when we talk about lean management called non-value added so we said value is added during the transformation process However, there may be some activities such as rework. When work is not produced at a required quality very first time. For example, you purchased a meal from McDonald's, you asked for Big Mac and they gave you junior chicken. So there needs to be, this one needs to be served again. So there's a rework, right? So when you have non-value added activities, this tends to increase uh, the operation, the, the uh, overall cost for the finished product. Because whatever material, labor hours, machine hours, electricity, any other thing that requires to produce goods and services is wasted, we need to compensate the cost of that. So you can increase the value of a product by decreasing the cost of inputs. And how you can do that? By minimizing the non-value added activity, right? Which means minimizing the rework, quality issues, uh, making sure that your suppliers are giving you right quality product, making sure in our example of McDonald's, we are taking correct orders. So maybe you need to train your employees more, right? So that's where you have next slide, uh, which is uh, providing a hypothetical example of value added. So the idea here is to show that a loaf of bread, it starts uh, from farmer, where the wheat is harvested so the harvesting process per unit is going to have some cost associated with it and i'm only considering in this example the value added i'm not talking about the non-value added activities so as you start adding the cost of river cost of wastage uh, cost of spoilage uh, cost of returned items uh, this price is going to go much higher right uh, okay, so then wheat is transported. So that's an activity, right? It has certain costs associated with it. To cost at this point is going to be 23 cents per unit. Then mill produces flour. So that is costing us 15 cents per unit, which means 23 cents here and 15 cents here. So that makes 38 cents and so on so each activity adds value right okay and the idea behind it is eliminating non-value added activities or making your operations or value added activities more efficient so that they are costing me less and i'm producing same amount of product at same quality so in that case i can increase the value so we're back to the example of goods and services so again, uh, the whole idea of the slide is to give you some understanding that um, each firm will include some service and tangible component. Uh, so for instance, for automobile manufacturing, uh, it's quite straightforward that we are making cars. There's a dominant component, which is manufacturing of goods. However, there's a service component which belongs to customer service liaising with customer and other teams to develop new products to improve the operations at the same time if we take another extreme uh, which is 
uh, hospital or teaching uh, so it's dominated by the service component however there are some tangible elements for instance in teaching there are certain outputs in terms of the material being produced and distributed to students by physical means right so have a look at these examples and if you have any questions please feel free to uh, reach me out more details on how you're going to differentiate between uh, services and goods so I'm keep on highlighting on the output part so services are intangible right goods are the output is more tangible customer contact is very high right in services take example of restaurants hospitals hotels airlines in all these services the customer contact is very important and customer contact is very high on the other hand for the manufacturing you may want to involve customer when you're developing a new product or perhaps validating the product otherwise when you're manufacturing or making a car the customer contact will be very minimum uniformity of inputs is very low again in this case think what a fast food restaurant or a fine dining restaurant from one order to the next there could be a very large variation very high labor content services are always labor intensive due to high emphasis on customer service component so as the uniformity of input is low the uniformity of output is low too right the services can be easily customized to individual customer needs so which leads to some of the difficulties the productivity is very difficult to measure and it's difficult to control quality so that's where some operations are moving towards automation uh, so that you can measure productivity more effectively by minimizing the human component as well as you can ensure the quality is consistently produced and on the other hand in terms of goods it's just opposite of what we discuss for the services so if you want to read about this in more details there are other examples provided in your textbook you can look at page number 10 and 11 so it brings us to some other terms that will be coming into play uh, when we talk about various chapters i want to just briefly explain these terms and we will explore these as we go through the chapters uh, so model model represents reality it could be a mathematical model simulation model so some of the models we're going to deal with for instance in the upcoming chapter in chapter three we'll be using some demand forecasting models such as knife forecasting model moving averages exponential smoothing in order to predict demand based on the historical data then in operations management we're using lots of quantitative techniques in order to analyze uh, let's say quality problems uh, demand forecasting uh, poor analysis inventory management uh, project planning scheduling so all this we based on the quantitative analysis techniques the next point is very important when it comes to operations management uh, most of the time you're involved in analysis of trade-offs so which means two possible uh, outcomes and those are usually conflicting so look into some problems uh, especially in the inventory uh, management chapter in order to determine the reorder point because when it comes to inventories we're going to deal with two cost categories ordering cost and holding cost so the idea here always is to minimize the total inventory cost so a high level explanation of that would be uh, if you're ordering smaller quantities so that you are going to keep less inventories on your end this will increase your ordering cost so ordering cost means uh, any paperwork that needs to be processed in order to put a new order from your supplier doing the inspection receiving material and moving it to the required location on the other hand you can reduce the ordering cost by putting uh, bigger order quantities to your uh, from your supplier however then you need to store those inventories at your end so there's always a trade-off so we'll be analyzing those trade-offs and we'll look into some of these examples when it comes to staff scheduling job shop scheduling uh, then inventory management right the next comes systems approach when it comes to improving the operations we're looking into lean management in that particular chapter we'll talk about systems thinking so from that chapter you will understand it is important that you think about end-to-end -end value 
which means improving the operations by understanding what is the impact of that improvement on the preceding and succeeding processes so that we are not creating problems for other function areas or for the other processes when it comes to decision making uh, you also need to establish some priorities because in operations you may have uh, certain issues such as quality problems product design issues uh, training needs for your employees buying new machines but we cannot uh, due to the limited finances manpower and available capacity you may not be able to solve all the problems at a given time so you need to select a problem which is most important at a given point so we're doing Pareto analysis last but not least we'll be talking about worker safety because human resources is a key component when it comes to operations uh, so we'll be talking uh, more specifically in, in one of the chapters uh, about uh, the job design and when it comes to lean management chapter we're talking about five S's uh, which is a practice to ensure that the workplace is, uh, is, is safe uh, for the workers so that brings our first chapter to the conclusion in terms of video lectures so the number of slides which are not included in the video lectures but make sure you go through all these slides and go through these video lectures so that uh, we can focus on the discussion activities uh, during our contact hours and as well as i will be open to answer any questions during those contact hours so please feel free to ask those questions if you have any issues understanding concepts through these videos please feel free to come bring those questions to the, our contact sessions as well thank you have a good one